Next on the docket, is a threat on Facebook a crime? And I'm not talking a garden variety threat, but a detailed specific one. A Pennsylvania man named Anthony Lonis, he was sentenced to three years in prison for threatening his estranged wife. He posted Facebook messages about putting her head on a stick, and he also spoke about shooting up a kindergarten class and, for good measure, killing an FBI agent. Lonis says his posts, they were inspired by lyrics from the rapper Eminem. Everybody blames the rappers. All right, the Supreme Court, they overruled his conviction by an eight to one margin, of course, Clarence Thomas dissented. But anyway, does that mean if authorities found James Holmes' diary describing his plans to shoot up a movie theater, they wouldn't be able to successfully prosecute him and prevent a massacre? Uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about this, guys. Jimmy, remember with the cannibal cop and all that? Uh, a, a, th a thought is not uh, in action, but I always thought you can't cry fire in a crowded theater. It's not him saying, I'm mad and I want to kill everyone. He detailed who, he detailed how, and he detailed almost where. So uh, at what point, you know, can you say anything online that carries no consequences? That's not what the Supreme Court ruled. We're not in as much trouble as you think. The case was reversed because the judge in the case refused to charge the jury that they needed to find the people, the government had proven his intent was actually to do that. And instead what he charged was that if you find that these words to a reasonable person would be A, B, C, and D. Okay, Supreme may, Court may again for, for the audience and me, distinguish the difference between those two things. The reasonable person standard is a civil standard. In order to convict somebody of a crime, you have to prove that that person intended the act. When the, when the judge charged the jury, he simply refused to charge that there needed to be proven the personal intent to commit the crime. And in the opinion, the Supreme Court said, clearly, if you have proof that you have words like this, and you can prove an actual intent to carry them out, then you're beyond okay, okay. free speech, oh, and there can be a criminal conviction. I got it now, but Doug, here's my question. If they're just words on a screen, okay, does he literally have to buy the stick? Does he have to find the, uh, the, uh, the schedule of the FBI officer he was targeting? Does he have to case the school in this particular case? Or is it enough for him to say, I'm going to blow up this school at this time, or, or do we have to prove he goes about securing the means, uh, scheduling? I mean, isn't his own words enough? No. Um, there's a strong presumption when you're talking about words alone. We have First Amendment rights. We can express ourselves. We can meet with people. Even that if we they're meet detailed. With. Well, that's where, that's where the, the rub is. If you prove the intent through other means, if somebody uh, has duct tape, if they've now uh, out, you know, bought a plane ticket to go to the, where the person lives, there's something else other than their words, and that something else could actually prove the intent. But Mayo, extrapolate that now to a madman threatening to shoot up a movie theater, okay? If he clearly communicated his desire to do it, under this, him just saying it or posting it wouldn't be enough. We have to get him in the act of buying an assault weapon and then driving to the theater. I mean, think about it. It's not illegal, a lot of places in this country, to go walk out of a store with an assault weapon, right? Um, you don't have to do a background check or anything else. We literally would have to say, okay, well, he has intent. Now he has means, but we've got to wait for him now to drive to the theater. And only then when he's in front of the theater, will that be an actual thing that we get him before he goes into theater six? I mean, that's a... That's a kind of a scary standard that we have to meet here to stop a lunatic from carrying out his or her threat. Well, as Jim said before, it's about your intent. So you have to show that it's more than just words. People say all kinds of things in the heat of the moment. People say all kinds of things when they're joking with How each about, other. Does it matter who the person is in that if a person was clinically diagnosed as schizophrenic or somebody that had a, um, a record of, uh, uh, you know, a a violence or whatever, maybe not this exact post, but something else, right? They've gotten a barroom fights or whatever, and now they're threatening to go back to the bar and blow it up. Would that be different than one of us saying it? No, because what happens is, 
uh, a matter wow. of fact, it may even make their intent less, it may be more difficult to determine right. their intent. If you have mental health issues, you may not be in your right mind and you may be saying things that you don't even understand. Mm. So, but what it does is it does allow law enforcement to follow that person, to do an investigation as we were talking about before, and then that's how you keep people safe. But you do need a specific intent and, uh, you know, it depends on the statutes. Each state has different statutes. Some states say that if you're calling someone with the intent to harass and Listen, alarm I understand that person, this, I get it, Frank, but you really, you, I know you three okay. guys, this clears it up some, but for the public, we say, wait a minute, with all the lunatics running around, when they actually have physical proof, let's say, of what they posted in their intent, it's no longer enough. Now you got to show they've got the means and they really, really mean it that they're going to do it. You, 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 you've used two words in this discussion that are important for the public. Prevent and prosecute. You can prevent. You report it. They can investigate him. They can go talk to him. They can see if there is any they other evidence. Cuff and you stuff. Can, at that point. Now, if the woman also called the police and said, he also called me and said this, that, and the other yeah. thing, you've got something more. So you can prevent, but you need more to prosecute. Um, when we come back here, um, I got three questions, um, one for each of these guys. We're going to go around the table and talk about everything from racial profiling, incredible story of an entire town decimated by asbestos, and also whether federal prosecutors are actually going rogue and getting too overzealous.